Welcome, YouTube. I delivered you the moon on time, albeit very dangerously. And so you were like, hey, man, moon was good. Really love that you delivered that for me. But I, I want to step it up. I need some dinner. Deliver me some Mars, big dog. And I got you. All right. I'm going to deliver you Mars in this playthrough. But in order for me to deliver you Mars, you gotta you gotta tip your delivery flyer, okay? So you, you how do you do that? You leave a thumbs up on this video and you leave a comment down below and you tell your friends. Alright, that's how you that's how you tip the delivery guy. I'm gonna deliver you Mars. It's a pretty big ask. But you asked. So I'm delivering it. Just tip your guy. Alright? You know, maybe become a fourth wall member or something like that. Maybe show up on Twitch, huh? Ah! Talking like a gangster now. That's how we talk on Mars, okay? You, you, you scratch my back, I bring you Mars, okay? All right, that's enough. It's enough. Seriously, glad you're here. This will be fun. This is a blind run. I've never played it before, so. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Follow the links in the description. Starting a new game will delete your save progress. I don't have any save progress, so yeah. Home is Kathy Johansson spends quality time. Okay. Damn SSDs. Too fast. Managed to get you a new one. Yeah! Right, but before I give it to you, you have to promise to take better care of him. Okay. Better than the ones that you destroyed before. I promise. <laughs> a moon bear for my moon bear. I'm almost ready, Kathy. Give me five minutes to get to my wetsuit. Don't overdo it, honey. School and work never stops. Just you pace yourself. But I know, I know. I just lost track of time. Plus, the subject matter fascinates <laughs> Father like daughter, I guess. <clears throat> Promise? Yes. So that's our boy Isaac, huh? Cool. All right. So we're going to get some exposition. Uh, if we've got faces, I wonder how much dialogue is going to be a part of this. I may be doing more analyzing than I thought. Moon Man Bundle, volume number one. With the fate of the world at stake, a brave astronaut travels to the moon. His mission... Investigate the lunar colony's mysterious radio silence. On an abandoned space station, he finds clues that an old friend may still be alive on the lunar surface. Will the astronaut make it off the derelict space station and onto the moon? About the authors. Stationed together at Copernicus Moon Hub, author Conrad Van Schaik and artist Amira Torkar conceived Moon Man's suspenseful thriller using their surroundings as direct inspiration. Ooh. 
Got a little model space station. Moon Bear, his way back home. Star Maker. What a cool room. I would have loved to have a room like this when I was a kid. Your own little ASE? Come on. That's me, by the way. I know you could tell from a long way away because it's basically photorealistic, but I labeled it just in case you're dense. Star Bears! I mean... Come on. <laughs> Love me some bears, huh? What up, Kathy? Or, uh, Claire? Tablet ID, Claire Johansson, Pictou High School. Deadline coming up. Finish your document, The Trolley Problem Explained, today for early submission. Oh, The Trolley Problem Explained. All right. That's us chilling, hanging out. Man, how luxurious of a place do we live in that we can afford to go, like, scuba diving while the earth is just, like, rotting at the core? I'm going to be an annoying little sister. Okay, you're not going to let me. Want to take it in. Also has similar vibes at the beginning of The Last of Us. Dad! Damn! Isaac killing it. World's best dad? Holy shit! Wow, how lucky am I? You're still my center of gravity. Much love, Liz. Wow. Look at that. I'd totally sit out and chill and drink coffee in a place like this. Hard to know if it's day or night. Maybe this is night. Mom, Claire, Kathy. Well, you know, we can't all have green thumbs. Hey, Priscilla Flowers, five lessons to make you the perfect parent. I remember that. He took that to the moon with him. My stylish hamper. Great property, just 15 minutes from the new campus. We must have earned a free loyalty relocation at this point. Lizzie, another one of these seasons and this entire area will be a desert. Can we just hold off until the kids are done with school and I actually finish a residency for once? I'm just trying to keep us safe. <laughs> Honey, kids have a dad that commutes to the moon. Safe means something else to them. All right. I want to give them just a bit of normalcy, okay? Christ! Mummies and daddies are allowed to do this, I'm afraid. When's he going to go snorkeling with Claire? Whoa. This man does not want his kids to know what kind of shit's going on in the world. And, uh... 
<laughs> Boy, what a tough judgment call to make as a parent. Really tough call. And there's a... So, there are some people that are of the mind that you should basically never tell your kids all the crazy-ass shit that's going on in the world because their brains just aren't prepared for it and you'll freak them out. And to an extent, that is true. Like, I do think it's okay to try to preserve children's innocence, particularly a kid that's the age like Kathy. Like, she doesn't need to hear about crazy world events that she couldn't possibly comprehend from a development standpoint. But you do run a risk when you do that, because if there's very real problems going on and you don't talk about it at all, it's going to be really jarring when all of a sudden the family has to make a move on that adversity. So him freaking out right there and panicking to shut it off shows that there is some real like that's the kind of thing that a child is going to connect with in terms of the intensity. Like Kathy could look at the TV and not really understand why any of that is an issue because she doesn't know how to synthesize that information. When Isaac literally dives over the couch to shut the TV off like that, that is what a kid will use to internalize that there's something to be freaked out about. So he actually maybe inadvertently shot himself in the foot if he's trying to like make sure that his kid doesn't freak out he's essentially going off this idea that she would know how to synthesize that information anyway. That means there's some real shit going on that he's trying to protect her from. I mean, he he dove to turn that off. Maybe he just freaked out because the TV turned on without him hitting the remote. I don't know. Okay, let's go, Kathy. Spectacular dive, honey. <laughs> Thanks. Such an athlete. <laughs> I think I pulled something. It is cool for her to be able to see her parents be like romantically intimate like that. That's that's nice. Kids like that. They like when they see their their parents. They might go grouse when you kiss, but it's nice to see your parents connect that way. Oh hell yeah. What a badass toy. Go to Mars. Oh, look at that. This is uh this is some foreshadowing. Tells me that's going to be me. I'll leave you two to each other. Harry? Did Harry move away? Oh. Mom, Dad, and Claire. I'm selling. Apparently, uh, old Kathy here is selling prints. You have her sister one. Made another one for We're Mom and Dad. Snorkeling. <laughs> yes. I know, Dad. Don't worry. Come on. Okay. Bye, Dad. Love you. Better get in the water quick before Dad catches you. Come on. Don't take the bear, Kathy. We just talked about this. All right, I'll be right there, Claire. Is she about to just like straight up dive in? No. Okay, just hold on a second. I gotta, I gotta explore this place. This is really pretty. Yeah, the Moon Bear is not gonna make it very far. Is there a developmental reason kids feel the need to label their drawings the way they do? It's just identity stuff. No, it's a, it just kind of depends.
recognizing that certain objects have certain identities and labels. All right, all right. Kathy, what did I say? But Moonbell wants to go snorkeling too. Bring me the bear that you little troublemaker. <laughs> no. I swear, you get this cheekiness from your mother, not from me. I would like to preserve Moonbear. Fine, Dad. Carp, thank you for gifting that sub. You're a dirty liar, Isaac. Well, well don't start listening to me now. Go snorkeling with Moonbear then. Isaac, no. This game's gonna force me to do analysis here. Come on, brother. You can't send mixed messages like that. Don't do that. Don't do that. You give a command, you give a directive, and your kid complies despite saying no. You take Moonbear and you say, hey, I really appreciate you listening to me. You don't walk up and go, oh, well, you know, now's not the time to start listening to dad. <laughs> It sends a mixed message to your kid. It's not consistent. It's impossible to interpret. Kathy's not going to know what to make of this. What do I like? Why would I listen to you then? If you're if I'm going to do this and then you're going to tell me never mind and you're going to assert that I somehow this is a time for me to spread my autonomous wings. Why would I ever listen to you again in the future? This is this is this is bad parenting. This is terrible terrible parental messaging don't do this if you're a parent that does this you should stop immediately all right cool yeah go ruin your bear despite trying to be compliant with my request and knowing better come on isaac come on kathy jump in me first huh oh boy We Dad? Right. I'm going to get you out of the window. Come on. Dad? It's all right, I'm in here. Oh my god, is he putting her into cryo sleep without her knowing it? Isaac! No! Isaac Johansson. Kathy Johansson. Whatever happens, you must keep Ada close to you at all times. Never let her at your son, all right? Oh, okay. Thank God. Oh. We must be very quiet, okay? Nice. Listen to me. Outward moon base, 2060 AD. Oh, this just got intense. Where's Moonbear? We don't have time for that now, darling. I want Moonbear. I, I think it's somewhere in this room. Uh, be quick. Holy shit. Uh, this is not an indictment on Isaac or his wife, but... The, uh, the fact that in this like time of significant adversity, Kathy wants Moonbear, kids will make objects, sometimes a type of attachment figure for them. We talked about this in the Detroit Become Human playthrough, but stuffed animals are permanent objects for kids that provide a level of consistency, reliability, and care to them not in lieu of their parents, but in addition to. And her desire to find Moonbear and her distress at not having him suggests just how important it is. So as a parent, you want to emphasize and appreciate the importance of a stuffed animal like Moonbear, which Isaac did a pretty decent job of there. He initially was like too late, but then kind of realized it was a big deal. That's how you want to handle it. When you just take stuffed animals away from kids because you're like, you're too old now, you are really not understanding how much stuffed animals can mean in terms of a caretaking standpoint. 
it's not an indictment on you that they look to those, but it certainly can help. So don't just yank this kind of stuff away from kids. You should absolutely understand the importance of it. And adults can have these kinds of objects too. It's okay if you're an adult that also has like a stuffed animal or something that you hold close. There's no shame in that. Uh, they are reliable. They bring us comfort. It's okay. Found it. Great. Now, now come to me. I need your help. He's doing a pretty decent job of giving directives. He's obviously panicking and some shit's going down. And hopefully he can protect her, but man. Tablet ID, Isaac Johansson, scripting mate. Requested conditions have been met. MPT connection has been reestablished. Protocol auto wake cryopod, Isaac Johnson activated. There's a button on the other side of the room. When it turns on, I need you to press it, okay? Okay. Now, Moomba. I'm going. That's it. Okay, it's time to go. Follow Dad. Let's go, Ace. Jeez. Okay, let's go. Okay, listen carefully, darling. In the room on the other side of the vent up there is Ace. Rose's Ace? Yes, we need to take him with us and get him back to her. Ace likes me best. After Rosa. Absolutely. That's why I need you to climb up there and call him over to you. Quietly. He's doing, I have to say, Isaac's doing a pretty good job attending to the fact that he's with a child while some real nasty shit's going on. I don't even know what it is, but he's doing a good job. So they were all planning to abandon Earth? Let's tell the team we've got the Lunar Council AC in our hands. We need to see more of these holograms. Oh, this must be when they pulled the switch to go. Ace. Ace, it's me. Hi, follow me. This would be more terrifying for a kid if her dad was actively panicking. The fact that he's staying calm and addressing her the way that he is helps a lot. To her just being like, okay, we're just, you know, kind of doing a thing. What are you doing? ASC unit number 67354-N. Initiate transfer protocol. Lunar Council override. Isaac Johansson. Code 170544. Dad, Ace isn't like this. It's okay. He doesn't know we're taking him back to see Rosa. Isaac Johansson. We've got to hurry, Moon. They're probably looking for us now. Dad... My legs hurt. Come, I'll, I'll carry you. Oh boy. Holy crap. Yes, it's working. Wait, why isn't Vita's door opening? Come on, come on. Please, Kathy. 
please understand. If Daddy goes back to Earth with Claire, you and I will never be allowed to see each other again. We have to board the ship before it leaves without us. Holy shit, dude. I need to get that door open. Follow me, quick. Oh, this is bad. Love how he doesn't even wait. Shit, dude. Makes sense why Claire doesn't like Isaac, huh? <laughs> Holy crap. That's a great way to begin this.
Cape Canaveral, 2068 AD. What do you think, Ayla? Reckon we'll get a few more months out of this relic? Yeah, me neither. If your butt is starting to hurt from the car seat, you're welcome to come up here and help me. You're right. You wouldn't. Listen, MPD systems are for nerds. Okay. Okay, bro. Just be honest. You're feeling too threatened by me and my super brain. That super brain of yours still needs to be chaperoned to every MPD dish by a senior staff member like me. Remember? Wait, did you finally admit that you're old? Whatever. Anyway, I'm nearly done. Just have to cut out some plating that's obstructing the beam's waveguide. Can you let Moonhub know the dish is ready to receive? Already did. Don't forget to hook the screen points back up to the receivers. Mm-hmm. Got it. Fix the dish. Can do. go I w I'm looking forward to seeing how Kathy processed that traumatic event in her life of her father literally getting on a spaceship and leaving while her older sister held her whoa be like wearing some protective gear or something while I'm walking around shit like that. So we're in Cape Canaveral, which would be Florida, right? Florida, Florida not looking too Everglady right now. Let's get the stream points hooked up and then we're done. I too would like to have a wrist laser. So, yeah, I, OSHA apparently is, they spent more of their, OSHA got sent to Mars with the rest of the crew. They were on outward. Uh, OSHA is no longer a regulatory body of any kind of sh way, shape, or form here on Earth. They're all on Mars working on the new infrastructure, making sure that's up to code. When they said they were bailing on humanity down on Earth, they meant it. <laughs> they, they took OSHA with them. Real bummer. Look at this cable management, though. I'm into it. I'm into it. I love the scale of this. This is awesome. Welcome back to Earth. Let me hook up these stream points and I'll be right there.
The hell am I connecting this beam to? The hell? I gotta get some of this shit out of the way. Oh, here we go. Okay. What the hell is that window even there? If. Okay. Can go through windows. Good to know. Maybe. Cool. So you just have to point the beam. Before stream tech. Must have been a mess of cables snaking around entire living rooms. I remember it well. Good times. Okay. Just gotta find the receiver point to connect it to. Instead, we have microwave beams blasting around everybody's home. That's definitely safer. <laughs> <laughs> Way better. It's like Wi Fi, but power. Uh, let's get. We gotta get this shit out of the way. Oh boy. So we gotta somehow get power. Oh, I know how we. Okay. All right. I see what you're doing, Deliver Us Mars. I see what you're doing. Back over here. Now, if you want to make popcorn, just hold the bag up and the one. Yeah, just hold your bag up to your PC's power line. Look at that. Look at us go. Just, yeah, expose your head to it, Kathy. What's up, old man? This is the third site I've had to hook up to a stream point. These dishes shouldn't be running on emergency power. Yeah, along with everything else in this place. These smaller cascade antennae can't withstand another thermal shock. Not with the prolonged power traffic that's passing through them. You realize no one understands what you're saying, right? Come on, even you know what a cyclotron wave rectifier is. Okay, now you're just making up words. <sighs> Hop on. Is this guy literally a chauffeur? Like, I don't know, I don't know this lingo. Oh. Ride in the back like a dog, Kathy. <laughs> what? <laughs> Are we still doing drinks after this? Claire almost choked me to death last week for giving me beer. Listen, your sister might not be big, but when it's something that concerns you, that woman can kill a lion with her bare hands. So, that's a yes on the drinks. Hello? Hold on. I got a message that I've been asked to go to Maria right away. Apparently for some classified emergency meeting. Maria? That's oh, really serious. Can I tag along? No. You only have to smuggle me past security, and then once I'm in, I'll just... No. Fine. <laughs> That Claire? You going to that meeting at Maria's? That meeting you're not invited to. Yeah. Please, Claire, if you just let me through security, I'll just, you know. I really have to go. Perhaps you can find Don't bug me. It's fine. This is what training your kid with mixed messages gets you, right? Seriously, though. A boundary's not a boundary a if you don't enforce it. A directive's not a directive if you punish a person for following it. Like, keep your head down. It's been restless again lately. Really? 
Oh man. What happened to that dipped in the golden tongue of yours? It doesn't seem to work anymore. These are like wow. Uh boxcar slums? This is pretty cool. Other than the slum part. All right, this is your stop. Is it? It is. Just let the grown ups handle this secret meeting first. Okay, that was uncool. Just wanted to make sure you're not still going to try anything dumb to get in. I won't. Hmm. Don't even think about it. Uh huh. I got his plates. We're absolutely gonna do something to get in, I'm sure of it. See you, bud. All right, let's go find another way into Maria's office. Yeah. That's called lying, Ayla. Let's go. All right, the WSA building. I do want to explore a little bit. I just I want to I just want to see what we're working with here. Everything made out of concrete, not not great. Moon Man Bundle Volume Two, Issue Number Three. The Bridge in issue number four, Dawn of the Colony, written by Conrad and Amira. The astronaut reaches the moon base but finds it deserted, determined to unravel the secret to its abandonment. He follows the trail of his old friend, meeting an unlikely artificially intelligent friend along the way. Better write that down. Write what down? <laughs> not mentioning the meeting in the first place would be the best way to keep Kathy out of the meeting. I wonder if they want her at the meeting, but they tell her not to be there just to cover their own asses. So that it's basically Kathy violating orders when she inevitably shows up. The WSA globe. It's almost ironic that they painted it yellow. Oh, what the hell, man? It's almost ironic that they painted it yellow gold as this planet becomes more desertified every day. There's nothing I can do about it. The generations before us already took it all for granted. Sounds about right. <laughs> it hits a little close to home. <laughs> Kathy bringing that zoomer energy. <laughs> what up, folks? All right, we got to 8.05. What up? I like your stickers. The uncertain. Exposure to radio frequency radiation, you would have to be around it for 15 to 20 minutes straight to have long term effects on you, but it's uncomfortable enough right away that you wouldn't want to do that anyway. You start to taste metal in your mouth from cooking from the inside out. It's, it's so lovely. What a great experience. For people to have. The museum. Yeah, we can cut through here to Maria's. Might be fun to have a look around too. Not been here in ages. This reminds me of that office in Mass Effect that you go into when you do the Leviathan. Like no one has. 
Here's that book. Little diorama, let's go. In 2041, the lunar MPT dish helped diminish the planet's energy crisis by massively increasing energy yields. After the Great Blackout of 2054 and the instigation of Mission Fortuna, Rolf Robertson made his way to the moon base to restart the MPT, giving his life in the process. WSA really is trying their best to help our world with our energy needs. I'm sure we'll get to help the entire population. Um, oh, God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, well, Kathy. I love your positive outlook. About that. <laughs> Why do you think Daddy's on Mars right now? <laughs> oh, God. Ugh. But you wouldn't know any better. That's the point. You're down on Earth, you get certain messages. You control the flow of information. You control the way people see the world, man. Deeply important that the people down here believe that they're going to help. Microwave power technology is a revolutionary form of energy absorption and distribution. The Lunar MPT, along with the 42 Earth-based MPT receivers, helped stop the growing energy crisis of the 2030s. MPTs. My jam. I got absolutely fascinated by it when I saw my dad working on it every day. He really saved this planet when he designed this. Yeah, you look up to him. It's probably what made it all the more traumatic when you watched him take off. Um, interesting. So Rolf is acknowledged here for what he did, and I wonder if he... I wonder if Rolf reactivating that, he must have given us a chance for a few more years. I guess because it's in the 2060s now, so we got about 30 years more energy. Betrayal. The reactor. Tombow evacuation. Journey's end. Rolf. Ooh. I really want to... Ooh. Please tell me they acknowledge what Rolf did. After the Great Blackout catapulted the Earth back into an energy crisis, Claire Johansson, Maria Gonzalez, and Rolf Robertson undertook Mission Fortuna, a manned rocket mission to discover the Blackout's cause. Robertson, under the guise of Johansson and Gonzalez, refueled and reconnected the MPT dish. Claire really had such a big hand in reviving the WSA. Okay, so maybe the WSA is okay. I guess it was, I mean, it was really... M Willie, that William MacArthur guy, I think it was MacArthur, right? That guy was the guy who betrayed. Maybe it wasn't a WSA issue. R.I.P. Rolf. It was fun playing as you, buddy. Appreciate you sharing it, though, Jirith. It's interesting stuff. Mission Fortuna, Claire Johansson spearheaded Mission Vestia to provide manpower to the Lunar MPT and bring Rolf's body back home. Claire and her team discovered WSA software engineer Sarah Baker critically injured in cryosleep. Isaac Johansson, one of the three Lunar Council members and core Atwood instigators, took the last arc and escaped. That's the last time I saw Dad. I'm fine. Just remembering it always feels... I'm fine. After the success of Mission Fortuna, Claire Johansson spearheaded Mission Vestia to provide manpower to the Lunar MPT and bring Rolf's body back home. Claire and her team discovered WSA software engineer Sarah Baker critically injured in cryosleep. Isaac Johansson, one of the three Lunar Council members and core Atwood instigators took the last arc and escaped. Okay. Rolf's spacesuit from the moon. The journey this outfit has gone through. One can only dream of being part of such a legendary mission. Well, something tells me you might be, Kathy.
Here we go, outward. The Lunar Council, there he is, there's daddy. William MacArthur, Rosa La Verde. Isaac Joy, of course William MacArthur looks like that. What are these? They have all these. This is it's cool that they have some of the same artifacts from the first game in here. Advised by the Lunar Council members sometime before the Great Blackout, Project Outward saw the evacuation of nearly all Moonbase residents on board three large spacefaring vessels known as ARCs. The location of the traitorous council members, as well as the rest of the Moonbase crew, remains unknown. My dad designed and built most of the ARCs that they used. Like almost everything else here at the WSA. It was supposed to be an escape plan for the colony if something ever went wrong. And it turned into Directive A by Sir MacArthur there. So, ooh, are these all the, ooh, who are all these people? Rosa La Verde. Ayla, give that door a try and see if we get lucky. Well, worth a try. Oh, hi, Mark. Go. Oh, hi, Mark. I wonder if that was on purpose. <laughs> I did not go to the moon. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. Gonzalez, Claire Johansson. Looking good, sis. <laughs> Do I really need to change these? I like nothing like that anymore. Are you joking? You look so good still. Thanks, I try. You? Trying anything? Yeah, right. I just, I meant that, like, Thanks. you never have to Come on, Alex. Try. Uh, uh, good try, Kathy. <laughs> Hard to talk to your heroes. Are you headed to Maria's office? No, uh, why? Oh, I'm just going the same way. No. Hey, I was just looking at a few of the Mission Fortuna exhibits on my way over here. That's good. How long were you actually stationed on the moon? I was on the space station, mostly. Ah, oh, right. Yeah, that's why I never saw you on the surface, I guess. I saw you. Oh, really? When I did software upgrades for Rosa's ASC. Oh, yeah, ACE. No, ASC. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I mean, <laughs> I named it Ace because I didn't get that ASC was an acronym, so I just- I did that too! Ace, and Rosa would just start doing that too. It's kind of a confusing name, I guess. <laughs> this is hilariously, like, awkward to an extent because Something that Kathy kind of like reveres and is like so excited about and has this whimsy about was like deeply traumatic for Sarah. Like deeply traumatic. Like she was stabbed and then chucked in cryosleep and then Rolf basically found her. <laughs> so like this wasn't great for her to be up there. And sometimes people forget this when they engage with people that have like been through shit. The most common example being like when people talk to like veterans and they're like, oh, you were in Nam. Holy shit. How was that? And they're like, dude, I like I had friends get their limbs blown off 
by landmines. I had I lost people that fell into spiky pits. I was exposed to Agent Orange. It's not exactly what you think it is. Like, like you got to be careful when you engage with people around this kind of stuff because when you're like super far removed from it, you look at it as like, oh, it's a story and it was this big epic thing. But Sarah had to live through that shit. Like, it's not just some like anthropological piece of excitement. So not that you're responsible for understanding and caretaking other people's traumas. Like it's that's not your responsibility, but like have a degree of mindfulness around this stuff. Like, like don't ask somebody who went to war did you kill anyone like that kind of thing is just like you you have there is no tact it doesn't matter how curious you are about it stay away from that so like kathy engaging with sarah about this they are coming from two just completely different spaces and i i mean i appreciate that sarah is not being shitty to kathy and like, she's not being shitty to Kathy about it, which I appreciate, but Kathy also should have some mindfulness around this. And if and if Sarah wanted to be like, hey, I don't want to talk about it because it was really shitty for me, she could do that. But it's not a big glitzy glamoury thing. You, she, Kathy has the, like... I mean, Kathy has her own traumas around this, but just because maybe Kathy's made sense of it in some sort of way that's meaningful for her doesn't mean that Sarah has. So, anyway, I've made my point. Right. You're not entitled to that information. Yours is named Alex. Oh, right? Jesus. Kathy, chill. Where are you headed to? Wait, wait, you didn't answer my question yet. Uh, question? About how long you were stationed on the moon? You want the heroes with the Force Cry asleep or without? Sorry, I didn't mean to. I really just need to get to the meeting, Kat. I just wanted to apologize for what happened with my dad. I I know he didn't mean what he did. I think that's why he tried to save you on the moon. Save me? Oh, boy. Kathy. Your dad did not. Oh, boy. Kathy, I don't want to be disrespectful, but what your dad and the Lunar Council did, they, they left us here to rot. They committed the worst crimes imaginable against humankind and our planet. They deserve to be punished for what they've done. Am I interrupting something? No. No. Thanks to an entire backlog of precedents, I know not to be surprised to see you here. If I made it this far, you might as well just let no. me. No. Maria's gonna be on video. You no. Know. Okay, I thought you guys rehearsed that. Good boundaries. Oh. Totally did. Whoa! I like being a rebel. Let's go. Six years. What? On the moon. It was six years. I'm sorry I didn't answer your question earlier. Right. Thanks. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so you want to talk about being a ridiculously complicated situation. Makes a lot of sense. So, children will at times will personalize the sins of their parents. In this case, the sins of her father. And will sometimes feel the need to apologize on their behalf without actually understanding the context through which ha this all happened. See, the thing is, is like Isaac being Kathy's father and being somebody that it seems like she had a reasonably decent relationship with it's hard for her to fathom the idea that this person that she trusts and care about as much as she does could create, could seriously engage in crimes against humanity, which is essentially what he did. And the problem is facts is facts. Doesn't matter what his intentions were. Like, doesn't matter. The impact of Isaac's decision-making process and being involved in the way that he was and the stuff that he was involved in. It matters, man. It happened. Doesn't, doesn't, 
doesn't matter how good of a dude you think your dad was or how good of a dude he was to you. The fact of the matter is, like, shit got wacky because of stuff that your dad engaged in. And your dad, by virtue of being in a position of power, pulled certain strings in order to make it go in a certain direction, which included stabbing Sarah and acting selfishly in a time of panic. That's a very hard thing for a kid to wrap their head around when somebody they care about in that way engages in that kind of behavior. So the dissonance is real. I honestly give Sarah a lot of credit for saying, hey, with all due respect, your dad created one of the worst traumas of my entire life. And he probably did for you too. You just aren't acknowledging yet because you got some like rose colored glasses about your dad, but your dad ain't the dude. He literally got called traitor in that little diorama thing that we walked through. And that went right over Claire or right over Kathy's head because Kathy's not really processing her father that way. Rough stuff, man. I mean, but she gets like this whole like rebel thing of like blurring boundaries and getting involved and stuff. I mean, her father did some of that in the worst way. She's doing it now a little bit here, but like good for them for setting the boundaries and saying, no, you can't do this. You're not. Yeah, Rosa being lumped into the traders group is kind of brutal because yeah, I, the whole thing was a shit show. I mean, really, MacArthur was the big problem there. But we saw the stuff of Isaac. He didn't he didn't exactly act well. Space Tech Magazine, Maria Gonzalez, Space Tech's Person of the Year. Stream, director of the WSA explains MPT and stream tech in detail. How do you revitalize a dying space station that's needed to battle the global energy crisis? Where do you find the strength to keep fighting during the great blackout? Maria Gonzalez talks in depth about the obstacles she faced with her team and the contributions microwave power transmission and its stream system have made to the world. Look at that. They got Maria Gonzalez on Skype right now. I love that you can peek the window. It's a nice little touch. Using Skype in 2060? Yeah, it's all come full circle, apparently. Man, remember when Skype was like the most ubiquitous shit ever with video chatting, and then Microsoft just absolutely doo-dooed -doo on it? Made it absolutely irrelevant and terrible? Pepperidge Farm remembers. Welding simulator, or I guess, I don't know if this would be considered welding, but. I, I, that's some, you want to talk about some really dangerous shit? I'm literally walking around with something that's capable of melting steel beams. Uh, just strapped to my wrist. <laughs> like, God damn. <laughs> Like, we really just let people walk around with anything these days, huh? <laughs> All right. What do we got here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> energy crisis. Yeah. Like, how much energy is required for me to just have a plasma cutter strapped to my wrist at any, wrist at any given point in time? Uh, All right. Let's see. What do we got to do here? I'm thinking I need to get up to that vent so that we can get him through and I can peak this meeting using using Ace. That's my guess. Oh, am I gonna have to? Okay.
All right, so I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to hit this and then haul ass haul ass Kathy There we go I'm clever yeah All right, Ayla, get in there. Get in there. Ooh, Ayla moves a lot faster. Absolutely certain. So it must be them. Must be easier to hear with everything. I'm fine. I'm fine. I assume we can find it just by Mission Opera then. Yes. Mission Opera. Since we pulled Sarah and Kathy from the moon, we've been formulating a contingency plan. Should we discover Outward's location? During Mission Vestia, we found indications that the three Ark vessels Outward used to leave the moon weren't just for transportation. Our information leads us to believe these three Ark. But why reach out? Why never? Is it a distress signal or an invitation? Doesn't matter. Mission Opera has only one objective. Bring the Arcs and their revolutionary technology back home. Oh. Maybe we can determine the encryption used. We're working on it as we speak. I can enable terminal access in the back office. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's ballsy that they're like, hey. I mean, I kind of like that we don't know the intention behind them reaching out, but wow. They, yeah, they literally are just like, yep, yeah, we're going to just go to Mars, chill, chill for 13 years, somehow manage to survive for this long. I love that our mission now is like, all right, well, we're going to go steal that. Get it back to Earth, you assholes. Uh oh. Perfect, Ava, stay right there. What you're about to hear cannot leave this room. Understood? <laughs> you need more security in this place. Start by including Ryan and Sarah as part of the team. Present. Not only do they excel in their respective fields, they're vital to me personally. I trust them both in my life. That leaves one more position to be filled. Yes. Hey. Hi. At the risk of sounding like an idiot, I think we should take Kathy. What? 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 She was leagues above the other graduates in our program. You mean, the only class of astronauts that we've had in the past ten years? It doesn't change the fact that she aced nearly every exercise, sometimes even doubling my scores. I know you want to keep her out of this, but she's the best MPT engineer we've got. 
We need her expertise. Yep. And look, I will deny ever saying this under oath, I might add. Kathy is the most talented individual the WSA is working for them. Apart from you two. And me, of course. Uh, we're not seriously discussing this, are we? I mean, she... She has no prior experience. She's a complete risk to the mission. Sarah's right. Kathy shouldn't be part of the team. There are too many factors involved. Hey, hey, Maria. Can I come in, please? Seriously? Please, Claire, let me be a part of the mission. Were you eavesdropping? Yeah, and I'm sorry for that, but Claire... You know I've proven myself to the WSA. Two concurrent science degrees, majored in stream tech, top marks in the astronaut training program, like Ryan said. Thanks for the kind words, by the way, mate. Sure. And you need my MPT expertise. Please, Claire, with you by my side, I know I can do this. We can do this. Plus, there's only like, what, three other trained astronauts to choose from? <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Yeah, what? duh. She's one of the most qualified people. We yeah, have. I don't trust Claire as a leader. However, if she's gonna be more. shitty about this, no, take her. Are you kidding? <laughs> okay, Kathy. Even though look, Ryan's last argument was severely lacking, yeah. Ouch. I believe you'll do everything you can to guarantee the mission's success. Right, Kath? Of course. Now I would like to go over the minutiae for the mission with Claire, Sarah, and Ryan. Can you let us handle this without listening in this time? Oh, well, seeing as I'm now- Kathy. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Of course. Wait, why wouldn't you include her now if she's on the mission? Yeah, you can be on the mission, but let the adults still talk. Go sit at the kitty table. A few months later, 2069. Nice, AD. Got some sick ice picks. That's a good point. They want to talk about Kathy. That would make sense. And I guess they maybe want to see if she can follow directives because she has not shown a propensity for that at all. Also, how insecure was that room that they were in? Jesus. You all snug in there, Ayla? You need anything? Cup of coffee? Magazine? You diva. <laughs> You look nervous. Damn, you get dressed quick. And that amuses you? No, no. Just seeing you, you're proud. <clears throat> hey, that scar on Sarah's stomach, is, is that the one Dad gave her? Yeah, why? Just curious. Knock, knock. You ready? Let's go. Yeah? <laughs> She's asking about Sarah's scar, and Sarah's like right there. <laughs> hey, Claire. <laughs> mess man okay here's the thing this is such a mess because they're gonna run into isaac if they go to mars and i sure as shit hope they've had a conversation 
not just with Claire, but with Kathy about what the hell they're going to do. Because if he create, if he engaged in crimes against humanity, either he's going to know that and he's going to fight them and he's going to be like, I ain't going back to Earth. You can kiss my ass. Or like they're going to have to like subdue him. Like this is not going to be reuniting with Moonbear and this beautiful epic thing of like, wow, look how great Isaac is. Like this is going to be a mess. And like the emotional collateral here for both Kathy and for Claire needs to be prepared for and fleshed out in every possible way before they go there. Like that is a time where you want basically as many what ifs as you could possibly have so that you run through the numbers because this is going to be a bitch when we run into Isaac. I do not remember exactly how many people made it to Mars. I don't know if we have the number because they bailed so fast. This is going to be like, this is so complicated because you have Sarah who hates Isaac's guts and then you have Claire who has an incredibly complicated relationship with her dad and you have Kathy who still idealizes him. Like you could not have a broader spectrum of experience as it relates to Isaac coming on this mission. I don't know what the nature of Ryan's relationship is, but geez, man. Return, too big. GC, we're heading to the rocket now. Copy that. Transport is ready for you. How's everyone feeling? Good. Slept like a baby. Of course you did. You didn't? Yeah. Sure. How about you two? Good. Yeah, fine. Good. Guys, we're going to need to communicate a lot more clearly and directly with each other if we're going to be going on a mission to Mars together. We can't be doing this. Yeah, fine. Yeah, okay. We're off to a bad start. I got to say, I, I don't want to be this guy. And I'm sure that some stuff has probably changed over the last couple months since we had saw that conversation with Claire. But I question Claire's judgment as the leader of this mission. If Kathy is so far and away blowing everybody out of the water and she was resistant to bringing her on the mission. And the reason that is, is because what that tells me is that Claire's emotional connection to Kathy absolutely clouds her judgment, whether for better or for worse. That that connection is a factor when she is engaged. And you, you can't have that be part of the decision making process on a mission this wild like it's got to be all pragmatics like you got to figure out how to understand what that emotional connection is and make that one of the facets of your decision making process from a pragmatic standpoint the fact that claire's just like no no no, no we're gonna leave her out of it i'm gonna compromise this mission by bringing the second best person because i don't want to put kathy at risk already has me to a point where i'm like that's not great And regardless, though, that's the thing, though, Anonymous, like even if Claire was thinking that Kathy's connection to Isaac clouds her judgment, which it certainly does, it is also passively clouding Claire's judgment because what, when you're trying to put the mission together, your entire objective is to have the best possible team with you. Like, the, no ifs, ands, or buts. I need the best of the best with me on this mission to Mars if this is as crucial as it is because we're talking about the most important mission for humanity maybe ever in the sense of going and grabbing this arc and bringing it back. So Claire trying tr Claire trying to anticipate Ka the nature of Kathy's relationship to Isaac and then making a call on that before having a conversation with Kathy and in lieu of acknowledging Kathy's absolutely amazing acumen with this stuff is a real misstep, in my opinion. Like, I want this mission to be successful. I want Claire to be a great leader. But... We got to be, we got to be we, we, pragmatics first if we're going to be going on this. Like, you got to be stone cold logical with this stuff. That's what your training's for. It's why, you, it's why a lot of people who are like astronauts were military first. Because you need that. Uh, yeah, I don't know what that transmission did to Ayla, but yeah, it's a little, uh, I, I'm hoping that Kathy said something to them about that. Like, by the way, Ayla got messed up and I can hear my dad saying Moonbear. 
Really hope that that was talked about because if we've got shitty communication on this team, we are in a we're going to be in a bad way here. Tram is leaving. Please hold on. Oh man. Like we got we got trauma going on for three out of the four people here. And who knows what Ryan's seen in his life. Here we go. No turning back. Nope. Hey, you know what I still think about? What? How come we get to live in better conditions than the people in the shanty town? How is that possible? Pure probability. Geographically and demographically, we were born in the right place at the right time. They weren't so lucky. Right. Wow, oh, they really don't seem to want us to go. No, but considering the amount of time... Whoa. You okay? That's about how this yeah. would go, I think. Just a bit startled. They're no. not helping anyone by trying to hurt us. Don't they understand that we're doing this to save them? <laughs> Those people will be on the MPT waiting list until the day that they die. You saw the WSA using so many resources to send four people to space? You'd be angry too. They don't yep. understand. But when we bring the Arcs back, they will. Or they won't. I mean, they might. And I hope they do, but they're promising something that might not happen. Even if we do bring back the Arcs. Yeah, I wouldn't trust it either. All these years later, I mean, I can totally understand this. Like, why are we sending, uh, like, the the inductive reasoning here makes sense from Kathy's perspective. Kathy knows that their intentions are good. Kathy knows that they're trying to take care of the greater good. But what she, and she was kind of there when she was saying, like, why do we get to live in a better place while these people are struggling? Like, she's she's connecting some wires as it relates to, like, power privilege and all that stuff. But yeah, like you can't assume that these people are going to be like these these people are afraid that they're not going to know where their next meal is. And we're taking all these money, resources, energy, et cetera, and we're devoting it to a mission, sending it to Mars. The fact that th that that many people are lined up and pissed about this means either there's no communication about this and the importance of it as it relates to what's going on, or there is just a huge lack of public trust, which I would understand. Because if they have not been disseminating information well and helping people understand exactly what's going on, this is what would happen. Everything's been so like under wraps. As far as they know, the WSA and the Lunar Council bailed on them when they went to Mars. I mean, I don't know how publicly available that knowledge is, but they have to know something's up if we're sending people to Mars here. So like the optics of this are terrible unless there's been clear lines of communication. And whether people are going to be willing to forgive that, yeah, is probably contingent on whether this mission actually brings them the resources they need. Hope springs eternal in the human breast. That's the way I choose to view it. Alexander Pope. The soul uneasy and confined from home dreams of a life to come. Look at you knowing your poetry. What can I say? So hot. Not just a pretty face. Take a look at this view. Wow. Damn. It ceases to amaze, right? It's a shame we couldn't build her properly. What? With all these shortages of materials, it really is a miracle that this thing is here at all. You could have mentioned this in all these months of prep that we're flying economy class? <laughs> No, I didn't want to worry you. Except for right before taking off. Seemed only fair to disclose it now. What? Sure. Claire! If Claire believes we can use her for the mission, we should trust her. I believe Zephyr 3 will come. Let me just fucking inject anxiety into everybody right now at the most crucial moment where everybody has to be paying attention perfectly to the launch sequence. Let me just... Take this moment as a person who's been holding on to this for months, who's probably anxious about it myself, and let me just take that anxiety 
swallow it down and then fart it out into the freaking tram right now so all of you can smell it and take it in yourselves. Like, that is literally what just happened here. Holy crap. <laughs> Is that like the, the the worst decision ever? Oh my god! Like from a trust standpoint, now if you're on this team, the thing that I'm thinking is, what the hell else do I not know? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Yeah, I figured now that we're locked in the tram at the point of no return, I'd tell you that this old bucket of bolts hasn't done the Kessel Run in 30 years. Oh my god. Claire. Just fine. I'm not running on faith, Arthur! Claire is Dutch Vanderland confirmed. I've got a plan. Just have faith, Arthur. There's mangoes at the Ark on Mars. Tahiti Mars is the name of the place that the Ark went. Arthur, have some faith if the ship will get us there. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, man, Anonymous. I'm sorry your friend said that. That's terrible. It's like the worst thing to say. Holy shit. Hope springs eternal in the human breast, Arthur. <laughs> I wonder how many Claire Johansson quotes you could take and make it Dutch Vanderlyn and it would be believable. Oh my god. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> oh Jesus. <laughs> oh my god, nobody's gonna express that they're disappointed in the way this is going. You don't have to get on the rocket. Oh my god, oh my god. Nope, I'm out. See you guys later. I'm going, I'm on the return trip. You guys have fun on the moon, or on Mars. Have fun. I'm gonna take me and my clip-on carabiner and go home. Oh, man. oh my god. We had to install crank windows in the cockpit. Oh, jeez, man. All right, enjoy the whimsy of the moment, I guess. People are rioting. No one's talking. Everybody's just in their anxiety right now. Kathy carefully evaluates the rocket for any faults. Yeah. Oh my god. Delivers the moon, she did pull that. Let me expose it for a bit. We're losing transmission. Rolf, it's important that you don't. Yeah, I know. I know. She's just not. She has a terrible track record. All right. All right, let's see how this old bucket of bolts, <laughs> how it handles this. Oh my God. Kathy, lead the way. All right, we'll do. Oh baby, here we go. No instructions on how to do this again. Launch All right. Launch initiated. Opera team, this is ground control. Proceed with final check. Copy, GC. Opera team, comms check. Go. 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 Cat, systems check. Oxygen. Oxygen is go. Flight. Flight is go. Navigation. Navigation is go. Ground launch. Hey, we don't want to bring Kathy on this trip. But uh, now that we have her, she's going to fly the plane. She's going to fly the plane. She's literally in charge of launching the rocket now that she's here, guys. We didn't want her. 
<laughs> Ground launch sequencer is go. Fuel? <laughs> I was expecting to be in the cargo bay waiting for this. Like, not that I'm the one that's literally doing the launch sequence. Liquid oxygen is go. Power. Power is go. Launch sequence functions. Oh, God. Launch sequence functions are go. Propellant load check. Good to go. Brian, airtight seal and cockpit air composition. Oh, no, cockpit. she's up front. Okay, we're okay. It's not, I'm not flying the plane. I mean, I'm part of flying the plane, seal I guess. Air composition are go. Oh, man. Sarah, start fuel cell thermal conditioning. Conditioning is a go. All right, she's in charge. I feel better retract. now. Strong back retract. baby come on old man old buddy don't Strong let me back down successfully retracted Sarah bent off lines this is cool I do love this Sarah lines are vented we are okay down. cool starting automatic ground launch sequencer sequencer is a go cat retract orbiter access arm What am I doing? Orbiter access arm is retracted. Okay. Copy. Start auxiliary power units. Auxiliary power units are go. Copy. Retract gaseous oxygen vent arm. Wow, what do I set it to? What do I set it to? I'm gonna blow this up, guys. I should have said it's a 69, you're right. Beanie cap retracted. Opera team, visors down. Okay, go. Go. Oh, cap. yeah. Ground internal power. Do it? Do I do it? No. Holy shit. Throttle control. I'm on the throttle? Oh shit. Lift off. Lift off. Oh! Oh, 
Oh shit, I'm blacking out. I'm blacking out. Oh god! You got it. Go. Copy. Initiate second stage ignition. Go. The second stage throttles up. Let's go. Yeah. Go. <laughs> Oh shit, did we leave the stove on? <laughs> oh, this is so cool. Oh, damn. A lot of brown. Now again, don't want to be that guy, but if the sun's over there, I don't know that this would be lit up. All right, pay attention, Ryan. Cat, initiate second stage separation. You got it, boss. And it's away. Cruise mode, hell yeah. Oh no, there's the sun. Right? Maybe? I mean, maybe the sun's right there. If the sun's right there, we're cool. This is really badass. I have to say, this sequence is super cool. I love that they really leaned into it on this game instead of like how they did on the moon. Oh no, I don't want it to end. Keep it going. I want to do the whole ride. Here we go, opera team. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Babe, did you prepare philosophical quotes for the entire journey, or...? Only like five a day. Oh, nice. good. Wanna see something cool? Meet me at these skateboards. You didn't like it? I mean, it's great, truly. One small step was already taken, so... Oh, wow, old school, yeah. huh? You look excited. You never look excited. Don't be cheeky. I was as frugal as possible when designing this ship. However, I did splurge on one last minute addition. A window. You're really ruining the moment. Sorry. <laughs> the game just drops you into a lead dangerous. <laughs> okay, no, the sun's up there. We're good. Whoa. Is what we're doing it for. Minor key. Yeah, absolutely. Sarah and Ryan are probably settling into their pod. I'll head back to the cockpit. You're right there. Ever take you this far from the house? 
We get another flashback. Out of the lake. Oh, cool. I kind of hope there's a lot of this in the game because I I love the idea. I love the idea of having these flashbacks like this. Jokes. Yeah, but did mom like poop jokes? garbage down here. Yikes. Didn't realize I was going to play Subnautica tonight. Notice there's no, like, fish or anything in here. Also, Dad? Where did you go? Oh, there you are. All right. Whew. Man, she's a trooper for not paying. I, this in real life, I'd be, I couldn't do this. The fact that she's a little kid and is able to just, like, be totally chill underwater. Testament to the training, I guess, that Isaac's had her go through. Okay, we're almost here. Come look. Whoa. You heard that too, right? Yes, I'm in the cockpit checking the diagnostics. Meet me here? Sure. All right, something was bound to go wrong. Oh. Sure did, Scott. You just have you just have keypads and shit just floating around. We're trying to see why the ACA didn't spot the debris. It should have. I need eyes on to determine the damage. I'll perform an EVA and let you know, GC. Copy. Did the first to get hit? Probably. Could you keep an eye on the diagnostics? I'll get ready. Wait, wait, wait. Let me do it. Look, I need real life experience out there. Of all the EVAs we could have. This one is pretty safe, right? I mean, I could just casually mention my stellar extravehicular activities training score. No, it's fine. I think it was 94. Mine was 95. See, you're so much better with numbers. <laughs> Best you monitor the diagnostics. Fine. Just 
Be very careful. We're still in orbit, so watch out for debris. Got it. Get prepped at the airlock, and I'll guide you on comms. All right. Do I get a tether? If you find yourself drifting, use your thrusters to correct and quickly double check the latch of your left nozzle controller. And when I've double checked it, Claire. I'm fine. I don't think you really double checked. Claire, I've got this. <sighs> right. Yep. Take rest out of the airlock. You brought me along, Claire. You gotta, you gotta trust me. Holy crap. I'm about to go out of this airlock with no tether. And I can't, I'm have a hard time believing that my suit. Oh, geez. I at least like tie a rope around me or something. There's no way. There's no way I'm free walking this in real life. Holy shit. Yeah. I mean, this is cool as hell, but. Where's from anyway? Satellites, mission related debris, even pieces from Sarah's old station. Pearson Space Station, from when Rolf survived the breach during the moon mission. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, kind of honored. What weird thing to feel honored about. <laughs> right, first things first, what can you see? Is there any damage to the thruster? I can see you. Hey! Hey! Okay, all right. All right, be serious, Kathy. Oh, this is so cool, though. Holy crap. This would be the most wild feeling ever to free walk in space like this. Oh, man. If I knew, like, if I knew I was gonna, like, die tomorrow and somebody gave me, like, one thing I could experience before I died tomorrow, it would be this. I would, this would just be so ridiculously cool. Oh, wow. Oh, yep. Yep. Not looking good back here. Some stuff sheared off. Yep. I kind of want to go down there. Debris. From Pearson Space Station, a big explosion on the station caused Rolf to be flung out, barely escaping death during Mission Fortuna. In the end, he had to give his life to save us from the blackout. A big sacrifice to make. Wow. So that piece made it all the way back to Earth. Because remember, Pearson Space Station was outside of the moon. So the fact that this thing made it all the way to Earth is wild. Where is the moon? Oh, there it is. That's cool. All right. There's a huge bit of debris stuck in the thruster. Could be from the space station. Okay. Is the plating around the base of the thruster damaged? Uh, let me check. It's seen better days, but it's holding together. Good. What about the pipes around the thruster? Not good. They're pretty badly bent. Okay. They'll need to be cut away if we want the thruster to be even semi-functional. Is the thruster still receiving power? Uh... It is. Shut off the power lines before you do anything else. There's a big button in the hatch. Just press it. And you're good to go. Okay. And watch out for the fuel canisters. If you hit one of those while you're cutting... Well, don't, please. What do they look like? Big yellow canisters. Do you see them? I see them. Don't worry, I'll be careful. Very careful. Very careful. Turn the power off and begin the debris removal. Okay. Uh, well? Hey, remember that sunken space station in the bay behind our house? Yeah. Why? I was just thinking about it earlier. Did Dad ever take you swimming there when you were young? He did, but not when I was that young. What do you mean? 
can appreciate the desire to have a conversation right now, but let's, uh, why don't we focus on the mission here? Like, like I'm literally cutting debris. <laughs> like, hey, our thruster's messed up and I need you to take a plasma cutter to it. But, uh, hey, you got a crush on either anybody on the crew, despite the fact that they're married? <laughs> I go in the throw. Oh, I can go inside. Oh, God. All right. That's okay. So I can go into the thruster. This is bad. Alright, get out of here, debris. Get out of here. Oh my god. Uh hey, get out of, get out of here. I guess that'll just get blown out when we launch the, when we do the thrusters again. Okay. Pearson was on top of the space elevator, so that would have been at the L1 point. Tipping point between Earth and Moon gravity bounds. Debris in Earth orbit makes perfect sense. That is cool that you know that. I appreciate that bit of insight, Uncle Bill. Yeah, I mean, this isn't great. I, I don't lo I don't love this. I don't think we have the resources to do it again. Are we just going to just never fire this thruster again? Maybe. Did we did we bring extra piping for this? Right. It's done. OK, good job. Turn the power back on and I'll run a diagnostic on it. Oh boy. Okay. Instruction, Sarah? Yes. 
Yes, class. <laughs> My vision's getting blurry. My uh, I think I'm running out of oxygen. Uh, let's go. Well, we're gonna need to. We're gonna need to hurry here. Get in the airlock. Holy crap! Oh, this is cool. Oh, man. God, Isaac, why'd you have to do crimes against humanity, man? You were so cool. Never noticed this one still had LA 900 tiles in it. This thing is really ancient. Oh, um, anyway, you're, you're going to love living on the moon, honey. Really? Absolutely. You can, you can play in low gravity anytime you want, and there's no school on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, you know, you'll, you'll get some form of schooling when you're there, of course. I mean, this unit still used piston tools. How old is this girl? So this is when he was trying to convince her that the moon was a good idea. All right, honey, go in there without me. Take the lead. Oh, man. <laughs> Daddy's right behind you? No? Okay. <laughs> God. <laughs> There's like heat coming off of this, maybe? Like, what is. Oh, man. Ah! Hit the buttons. Beep, beep. <laughs> beep. Um, Dad? Dad? Where are you? I don't know. Help! Where are you? Munda? Where are you? Dad, please help me! Happy! Hold on! I'm scared! I'm him. I'm going to get you out of there. Just reliving Kathy's traumas. Yikes. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, absolutely a trauma flashback. That would not be a moment you would ever forget as a kid. I really need this cuddly warmth now and then. Claire wouldn't like knowing that I brought Moonbear, seeing as it would probably remind her of the person who gave it to me. Better keep it safe in my locker. Man, yeah, this is so complicated. The nature of their different relationships to Isaac. I love that the warning signs are upside down and right side up. That's so cool. Cryopods. After spending s oop. after spending six years in one of these back on the moon, I remember how weird it feels to wake up after so long. That very specific kind of torpor sleep in these pods really messes with your head. I never quite know if I'm dreaming or not. Okay, so she was in the pod for a long time, obviously. Whoa! 
Uh, well. Is that Phobos or is that a... I wonder what that is. That's not Phobos. I feel like Phobos is bigger than that relative to Mars. Maybe I'm wrong. Sarah, don't tell her. Why not? If she knows where the word comes from, I will not hear the end of it. Why? It's still a cool TV show. Oh, yeah, but it's ancient. Kathy will have a field day calling me old. Babe, we are old. I am not old. Sure thing, Imzadi. When you're up, let me know so I can make you some gelatinous space coffee for your drink bag. Jesus, was that you? Yes, I'm okay. It seems to be happening more frequently. You sure you're okay? Yes, I'll be in the cockpit in five. X. Okay, X. Sarah's going through many restless nights filled with nightmares during the trip to Mars. Start routine procedure checkups. Open the shutters. Stepped into a war with the Cabal on Mars. Phallus to Ark. What now? What was that? Same thruster. How bad is it? Bad, sis. One broken thruster could send us completely off course. I'll sit up. Let me do it. I'm already out of torpor. No, it's much too dangerous. Claire, we have to act fast. I'm going. Please be careful. I'll head to the cockpit to guide you. Copy. Oh boy. Here we go again. Wow. Yeah, that. Right? What you think I think that's Phobos? There's more shit I okay. Where's the sun would be on the other side of this. I just want to get it. Okay, there it is. Bobos and Demos are both very small. Yeah. Sis, I don't think we can salvage. Jeez. Yikes. Diagnostics say the same. You'll have to cut it away. The whole thruster? In this state, it's a bigger liability. All right, we're just gonna dump the whole thing. I have a plasma cutter strapped to my wrist capable of doing that. Uh oh. Uh. Sarah can't turn the power off from here. Okay. You need to cut the power cable connected to the thruster. You can't miss it. Okay, because I'm right by gas canisters. Jeez. Okay. All right. Get out of here. 
Get out of here. Don't break the rest of the ship on your way out. Whoops. But, uh, Claire, we're going to have to run a diagnostic on Thruster, Thruster 1 after this. Uh, don't ask me why. All right. It's just a hunch. Big stress happening right now. Big stress. All right, let's get all these plates off first, I guess. Get them out of here. Go. that can just slide right through that pipe there okay no big deal let's get ah get out of here don't you cause more damage to my shit okay get go get go on get go on go on oh boy no oh, shit Oh my god, am I about to Titanfall into Mars? Oh my god! I wasn't ready for that. Oh man, they did a really good job making you not be ready for that. Oh man. All right. Oh. The forest feels denser now compared to a few years ago, at least. That's impossible, unfortunately. I know. That's why I said feels. And it still looks beautiful. You used to look even more beautiful. And oh, it shucks. become more beautiful again someday. Maybe. Maybe. This is just weird. It kind of looked like they stuck her normal head on a kid's body. They did. <laughs> We get to spend some time together before you have to leave. Girl, we're almost there. Let's keep walking. Come on. Let's go. Wait, so at this point, it seems like Claire's okay with the fact that she's going to the moon? Because when we played Deliver Us the Moon, Claire was absolutely like he had to use the legal system to get Kathy to the moon. I wonder what happened. 
Dad, to change all that. Are you gonna finish the story? Right, yeah, um, where was I? Ah, right, okay, so, so her mum was visiting one of her friends at a frat party that night. What's a frat party? Uh, well, it, it, it's like a birthday party, but instead of presents, people just, um, drink a lot. That sounds stupid. It was. I never liked going to those either. Uh, but I'm glad I did go to this one. Your mum saw me staring at her so much that she finally came up and asked me why I wasn't dancing. Why weren't you? Well, you, you've seen me dance. I told her that getting me to dance was a bad idea, and, well, um, I, I was proven right. What happened? I hit her drink out of her hands as I was flaying about like a lunatic. Then a piece of the broken glass got lodged in her leg. Then there was blood everywhere, and then we had to go to the emergency room. Oh, Jesus, Dad. Needless to say, I didn't dance again until our wedding day. But, Dad, why did Mummy fall in love with you, then? I really have no idea, darling. You'll have to ask her. Jeez, what a first date. Isaac is a man who seems to have good intentions that have terrible impact. Whoa. Cool, right? Who this made this? Dad. Now this is all still here. Uh, Claire and I used to come climbing here all the time. Why didn't I get to go? Well, you were a bit too young for that. Still are. Okay, Moonbear, come and get your gear. I mean, get my gear. Uh, Are you gonna see another trauma? Oh yeah. Final checks to commence mission. <laughs> oh, uh, my foot. So, this is like the climbing wall at home. Except this time, you get to use these cool-looking claw things at left foot. If you make it to the top of the cork wall, you are one step closer to the moon. Dad? Yeah? Are there a lot of walls to climb on the moon? Um, no. But, but to get to the moon, you need a badge. Just like your scouting badges, basically. Why do I need a climbing badge? Well... Well, it's a badge that, on our journey to the moon, were we to make an emergency landing, we needed to climb our way up, you could, and then you'd find your way home. Can something go wrong with the rocket? No, 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 they're, they're perfectly well built. Isn't that right, Claire? We're completely safe, Kathy. I promise. Yikes. All right, so... Final tally. Go or no go? Go. So it seems to be pretty clear from what we've seen so far that Isaac favors Kathy for whatever reason. And I wonder if part of why Kathy seems to be off here, other than the fact that she maybe doesn't want Kathy to go to the moon or she has a hard time lying to her sister about the dangers of it, is I wonder if Kathy now being old enough to be able to partake in these engagements with Isaac is making her realize that now once Kathy can do it, she ain't gonna get as much of Isaac maybe as she'd like to have is maybe Kathy shows a bit more of a propensity for these types of things. And maybe space is not a connective thing for Claire and her father, and Kathy showing interest in it is, and so she sees that and is frustrated by it. I don't know for sure, obviously, because I don't get a chance to talk to Claire, but there is some real, you can feel some tension here between all of them, and that's immediately where my mind went. Like this was like, this was our thing. And now Kathy's here. And now I don't really have many things left with my dad. Slam pickaxe. As hard as you can, one after the other. 
and then pull yourself up entirely by your upper body strength. It's okay, Moon Bear. It's all padded. Try again. You've got this. Oh, interesting. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. That's right. One and then the other one. So you Oh, this is actually neat. So when you press a mouse button down, the pickaxe stays in. As soon as you lift your finger off the mouse, she lifts it out of the wall. Neat. I made it. Amazing moon bear. We're going to the moon. Excited? Yay! <laughs> okay. Carefully climb down now, okay, remember? Claire says nothing. Oh man, you could screw this up so easy. Holy crap. I'm doing this in sandals too. Are you not entertained? Where are you guys going? Clever. This is just insane. You, you get that right. Tell me you get that. I don't think this is insane. She's just a kid. The moon's no place for her. And this insane training you're putting her through. Don't, don't you hear alarm bells oh, ringing? The moon is perfectly safe. How? How is it safe? Metal boxes. Outside an infinitesimally small atmosphere. How is that? Of all people, you should know exactly how well how well they are. Who we train? How do you justify the risk of taking Kathy to live on the moon versus her just staying there on Earth? You know what is happening to our planet. We forgot. You read the same WMO reports that I do. You watch the same news. You. You know. What Damn. Come on. Let's put the gear away. Jeez. So he did offer to Claire. Claire said no. Doesn't want to go. Maybe believes in the idea of making the earth okay. That's still, boy, that's tricky. And Isaac is so, seems so locked into his convictions about this that he's not really going to be swayed by the frustrations of his daughter. Yep. Why doesn't Claire want to go with us? She does. Don't worry. Change your mind. And um, we'll be together? Yep. No! Isaac! No! Let's get you home. You need a big rest before your exam tomorrow. Oh, Isaac. Isaac, 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 Isaac. been watching me sleep yes that's kind of creepy sis
I just... I just brought that for comfort. I, what do you expect to find on Mars, Kath? Nothing. I understand what you're thinking, I think. But sometimes what we want isn't... It's always difficult to do the right thing, and I really believe I's always meant well. Isaac? You mean Dad? For you, Dad maybe. always meant well. I just need you to understand he was not always good at doing the right thing. Right. Well, at least he always tries to do the right thing. Right. Well, that's all that matters, right? No. He's always looked out for us. He couldn't help what happened. Yeah, you're right. It's not weird for me to want to find him, is it? I need to know that when we get there, you'll make the right decisions. Cat, I said I'd do what's best for the mission. So far, I'm doing just that. Right? Well, this is a mess. The communication the around all this is... Dramatic effect. Because what's in front of us will amaze shock and possibly delight you what i know outward's the bad guy but you can't deny how impressive it is what they built okay you just shouldn't glorify them that's all okay well that might have put a bit of a damper on this but opera team i give you arc lavos would you look at that Wow. Have any of you ever seen solar panels like these? Looks like they combine standard PV panels with a sort of CSP layering over it. Excuse you? It appears these panels first concentrate the solar rays to optimization before they hit the photovoltaic semiconductors. The increase to efficiency is exponential. How could they be so far ahead of us? And why does it look abandoned? Let's find out. Sarah, Ryan, suit up and prepare to board. Kathy, start the pre-docking preparations. I'm doing the docking procedure. Yes, you're staying aboard the Zephyr with me. Now please start the procedure. I think she's afraid to find Isaac on the station. All right, Ryan and Sarah, prepare to board. Supervise the procedure on this terminal. Kathy, CMG and pit controls are released and available for manual control. On it. Waypoint zero to two are calculated and defined. Waypoint two assigned to auto lock abort function. Final go no go pile at waypoint two. All right, Kathy, take us in. Dr. Man, do not proceed to dock. Dr. Man, it's all I think of every time we do this. Yep, I'm gonna need you all to shut up so I can concentrate, please. I'm glad that our spaceship docking protocol fits perfectly with their system because, you know, Lord knows they could have created something else.
Oh, easy, easy, easy. Oh boy. Capture now also complete. Docking confirmed. Looks like a smooth dock. Great job, Kathy. Thanks. Ryan, Sarah, you have permission to enter the ship. Permission was assumed. We're already crossing as we speak. <laughs> Copy. I'll reprimand you later for insubordination. I shall accept my sentence with dignity. Sis, I can join them to investigate. We only need one person. That's not necessary. It's not necessary for me to stay here either. Kathy, please respect my command. Oh, my sister. I am your commander. She's your commander, dude. Claire, I think we could use another set of eyes over here. The interior is huge and built like a maze. We could be here a while. Copy, Sarah. Kathy's heading over now. Watcha! And we will go enter the station in part two. Thank you, friends, for taking the time to watch this video. It was good fun. I actually really love the way that this has progressed so far. We've got even more to go off of than we did with Deliver Us the Moon, and I'm really pumped to see what's aboard the station. And I hope you are too, and that you tune in for part two when it drops. Uh, as always, I appreciate your engagement. Leave a thumbs up, leave a comment. Thanks for watching these. I know they're a little different than the standard playthroughs, although you get a little analysis on this one, but y'all are great. See you in part two when we walk onto that ship, see what kind of crazy ass shit's going on.